All right, hey guys. Um, in this video, I'll be going over how to do some of these uh, piecewise uh, delta math problems. There it is. Um, for your assignment today. So the first couple are just evaluating using the graph and the function like we did in class. These are easy. Um, remember for any of these, by the way, they all have the capability to um, click on show examples or watch help video, but I'm making a video on particularly these ones that say example A, B, C, D, E, and F so that I can show you how to do those. And then you don't have to do those. Notice I have up here that their weight is zero in terms of your grade for this assignment. So you don't, um, you don't have to go back and do the ones that I'm doing. Um, so if we go ahead and look at example A, we're doing a nonlinear one first where I'm asking you to graph it. Um, but the reason is I think it helps you to better understand the, the domain part of it. So if you take a look at this piecewise function, it's made up of two functions, a absolute value function. Notice you have the parent function and it shifted down four, um, but you only wanna see it between the values negative seven inclusive and four exclusive. And then you have the line negative x, which if you recall, y equals x goes up like that. So y equals negative x just has a negative slope going through the origin, a negative slope of negative one. So we're gonna graph the first function, which is an absolute value. So I'm gonna click absolute value. And then I need to use transformations, which means I should understand that my vertex is zero, negative four. So I can slide it to zero, negative four. And then I hit done. And then it wants me to drag in. So this is a good way to help you visualize for when you don't have this feature, um, what your domain is. So I'm gonna drag from the left side till my X value hits negative seven, since my domain indicates that the graph does not exist until negative seven. And because of the equal to, it has a closed dot. Then I'm gonna go over here to the right and I want to drag it in to four. But notice it does not have the equal to at four, so I'm going to double click or just click it there to open that circle. So that's how you'll graph each piece. You'll graph, you'll choose the function, restrict the domain, and then pay attention to whether open circle or close circle. So that's our step two. And I'm gonna click done. And now I need to graph y equals negative x, which if you look, you have here your options of a square root function, a quadratic function, absolute value, a negative sloping line, a positive sloping line, and a constant. So it says select your second function. So since y equals negative x is linear, but I know the slope is negative, I'm gonna choose this negative sloping line. And it automatically graphs the parent function. So that's y equals negative x. Well, of course, with a negative sign. Um, and that's the line. I don't need to do anything else to that line. But if I had like a plus two or something, I would, could just take this point and drag it up to. But since it's just negative x, I'm gonna leave it there. Um, and then I'm clicking done. And then I want to restrict it to only the values where x is between four and eight. So along the x-axis, here's four, here's eight. So I'm gonna drag this in to four and then drag this side in to eight. So I should only see it between four and eight. And because these both have equal signs, I should have closed dots. And I'm gonna click finished. And I'm happy with that graph. Notice my graph passes the vertical line test. I will always miss it if it doesn't pass the vertical line test. So I'm gonna hit submit. And that's how you do that type of problem. So you'll probably like that feature of restricting your domain. When you get to the next ones, you don't have that option because it's your job to have a concept of what that means you will do. So if you take a look, we have two lines here. Let me make sure this is the right problem. Yep, for example, B. Um, two linear functions, one is a positive sloping line, the other a negative sloping line. So to click and drag, what you're gonna do is identify the first point and then um, hold it down, click and hold it down to get to the next. Now, one of the easiest ways to do this, guys, is to recognize that you're gonna see it between a value of negative three and zero. So if you want, you can find the ordered pairs and then simply 
draw the function in between those two order pairs. So in other words, if I, let me see if I do this. If I do, can't do it on, let me do it on notes. So, close that. So in other words, I can just basically do the order pairs, negative three, what? So if I plug that negative three into x plus four, then negative three plus four is one. And then my other order pair is zero something. So zero, if I plug in a zero, this zero into this function, zero plus four is four. So that means I want to graph my first point at negative three, one. So I'm gonna, from my origin, go left three, up one, and I'm gonna click and hold it. Negative three, one. There we go, negative three, one, and I'm gonna click. I don't see the line. If I click and don't see it, it's because you have to move, like move your mouse. So negative three, one, and I'm gonna drag it to zero, four and then I'm gonna let go. So notice these have closed points, um, so I'm gonna leave them closed. And then for the second function, for negative two x plus seven, I'm gonna plug in a zero. So if I take my zero here and plug it into this function, negative two times zero is zero, zero plus seven is seven. And it's gonna exist from that point until when x is 6. So if I plug in 6 for x, then negative 2 plus, or excuse me, negative 2 times 6 is negative 12, plus 7 is negative 5. But remember, you could also just type this function into y equals in your yellow calculator and look at your table to get these order pairs as well. So that means I'm going to start at 0, 7, and I'm going to drag it to the point 6, negative five and let go. So again, that's the point zero seven to the point six, negative five. And then I know here where X is zero, it is not including zero. So I need to go back to this point and just click to make it an open circle. But when X is six, it does exist there where the Y is negative five. So that would be my piecewise function. This line X plus four between those two points, negative three and zero, and the line negative two x plus seven between zero and negative six. So then, you, if I were you, I'd pause the video and then um, go do the other four that you have to do. And then, for example, and then we're doing the video so you can see example C. So I'm gonna do two examples. Um, this first one here is just a easy linear and a constant, and then the other has like three pieces. But it works all the same way, so I'm gonna just kinda of keep this open. So uh, we're gonna graph y equals x, where x is not equal to negative four. So uh, something to think about, like on a number line, if we did like a number line, uh, um, you know, all the way, oops. Then if I put negative four on there, I would have an open circle and I would shade everything else. So we did one of those examples before in your interval notation where this x, not, x can't equal negative four means it does equal everything else. So the first thing I'm gonna do is graph the line y equals x. So if you need to go to y equals in your yellow calculator and type functions in, you can and then hit graph to see what they look like, but you should know that that's the parent linear function, which means it goes from like one corner to the next. So I'm gonna do a line by clicking here, going all the way to the end. So that's the line y equals x. And notice it's everywhere except negative four, which means it should go to positive infinity and negative infinity. So I'm gonna go to the ends here and click. But then I don't wanna see it where x does equal negative four because it can't exist there. So I'm gonna go to where my x is negative four and drop down here to my line, but I need to put an open circle. <coughs> so switch your function over here to open circle. So when x is negative four, go down to your function and put an open circle. <coughs> so 
So there we go with um, it exists everywhere except at negative four. And then we're going to graph a closed point. So for the second part, what it means is when x does equal negative four, the y value is negative six. It's a constant. So that means I'm going to go to the point negative four, negative six, and put a closed circle. So switch over here to closed circle. So negative four, negative six, closed circle. And then we just submit. So that's one where it has like a function going left and right forever and then a point. Um, but now let's do example D and then you, you'll be able to go in and do these two. So I'm going to do one that has three pieces. So what, should, what I want you to keep in mind is that for the line y equals negative 2x plus 2 um, that you can get values on your table from 2 and left of that, which would be like negative 1, 0, 1, etc. But it just means if you wanted to draw like a boundary line at 2 and 6, you, you kind of could. So you might want to get a dry erase marker from the front of the room and put a line here at 2 and then a line here at 6. Um, and meaning that this function will exist to the left of 2, so over here. This function will exist in between x values of 2 and 6, and this one will exist to the right of 6. Now, you are supposed to know that to graph a line, you can use slope and y-intercept, right? So remember, y equals mx plus b, where m is your slope and b is your y-intercept. So when I, that's funny, your y-intercept. So in other words, this 2, I can put a point at 2 and then go down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, right? So if I click here at 2 and then drag it to down 2 over 1, I can double click on the ends and extend it. So again, I started at my y-intercept of 2 and then went down 2 over 1. So there's my line, y equals negative 2x plus 2, but I only want to see it for the values that are left, meaning less of 2. So I'm going to take this part here. I think I can do this. Let's see. Actually, I'm going to start that over. Since I know, let me see, it went down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1. I want to see it to the left there, so I think that's probably how I would do it is recognize that you need to see it left of negative 2 and because it doesn't have the equal to we want to open that dot and then for the next one for um, y equals 2x minus 8 I can type right you may want to just um, get some ordered pairs. So like I said, if you know it's between 2 inclusive and 6, you can do 2 and then go find the y value either in your table or by substituting it into here, which is linear. Y'all should be able to do that. So if you plug in 2, 2 times 2 is 4. 4 minus 8 is negative 4. But that means you want to have it um, closed at that point. And then when you do the point where x is 6, it'll be an open point because it doesn't have the equal to. So if I plug in 6, six 2 times 6 is 12. 12 minus 4. Oops, yeah, I said that wrong. 2 times 6 is 12. 12 minus 8 is 4. But you want an open circle. So that means I'm going to start at the point 2, negative 4, click it, and drag it to the point 6, 4, which 6, 4 is up here. So again, 2, negative 4, I'm going to click, and drag to 6, 4, and then let go. But again, closed here and open at 6, 4. Then for the last piece, for y equals 1, 
That means I want to see a constant function, a horizontal line, but I only want to see it right of 6, but including 6. It's going to be closed because of the equal to. So that means I'm going to go back here to line here and do where y is 1. It would be a horizontal line all the way across at 1, but you only want to see it right here when x is 6. So I'm going to click there, go to the edge of my graph. You have to go all the way to the edge if it's horizontal line, if it's constant. And then click here to make an arrow because it's basically 6 to infinity. I hope that makes sense. So right of 6 with a closed circle. And there are your three pieces. And then if I were you had pause and then go practice these. You'll have a couple of those to do. And then resume your video for example E. So notice now we are having to write the piecewise function. So if I'm writing a piecewise function, I have to recognize what kind of pieces they are first, and then I can do domain. Or to be honest, you could do domain first. So just make sure that remember from yesterday, we read from left to right, so the left piece needs to be first. So for this one, if you notice, you only see it to the left of the x value negative four. So that means that x is um, less than or equal to negative four. We know it's going to be less than or equal to because of the closed circle. And we, it goes has an arrow, so we know it's going to lift you know, forever towards negative infinity. For this one here, you see it to the right of the x value 0. So x is greater than 0. And that one's easy because it's a constant, so I'm just going to go ahead and put in negative 6. So we talked about that yesterday. If it is linear, you um, can either use the concept of slope y-intercept, um, or you can, to be honest, pick two points and do a linear regression if you wanted to. So in other words, if I recognize that two points on this line are um, negative 4, positive 1, and then right, where else do I have one? If I can see, let me zoom a little bit so you can see it too. Uh, then I would, going down this line, you want to make sure it intersects the this light gray grid system cleanly. So right there is a good point. So negative 6 and negative 4. So if you wanted to, you could do like stat, edit, put in these two points, and then do stat calc 4, and hit go all the way down to calculate, hit enter. That way it gives you your slope equation, slope intercept equation. Or just recognize that in this case, my slope is equal to, so if I consider from the point um, negative 6, negative 4 up to this point, I would go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 over 2. So my slope's 5 over 2. Therefore, my equation would be five, y equals 5 over 2x, and then I need a y-intercept. Um, so I can continue that slope of up 5 over 2, but eventually if I don't see it on here, I may need to use a bigger graph paper to do that, or um, you could even think about like a table if you wanted to, where you add 5 on the right and um, add 2 on the left, meaning to your x and your y, or um, you can plug in a point, or to solve for b by plugging in a point for y-intercept. So just as a quick reminder to do that, um, for y equals 5 over 2x plus b, if I'm trying to find the y-intercept, then I can pick any point on this line, including this point, negative 4, positive 1. So again, if I'm considering the point negative 4, positive 1, then that means that x equals negative 4, when y equals 1. So that means here for my equation, I can let my y be 1. I have my slope of 5 over 2. I, my x is negative 4, and I'm trying to solve for b. So you can do that math, like 5 over 2 
times negative 4 would be negative 10. You can put that in your calculator. And then, so if I then have 1 equals negative 10 plus B, then to solve for B, I clearly would add 10 to both sides and get B is 11. So that means I have my equation. I'm going to go back up here and just make my B 11. So 5 over 2, X plus 11. So 5 over 2, X plus 11. Hold on just a second. Let me zoom back out. So like I said, either I can do the algebraically, I can do linear regression, I can graph it, I can go up 5 over 2, up 5 over 2, up 5 over 2 until I hit my y-intercept, whatever your choice is, okay? I think I did my math right on that. Yep. But that's how that goes. And then you'll do practice in a couple of those. And then lastly, I want to go over this example F, absolute value as a piecewise. So for this one here, to write the absolute value function as a piecewise function, you should understand what it looks like and be able to sketch a graph. But if you go into Desmos and were to graph it, we're just going to basically look at um, the graph and write it as two pieces, the left and the right side. So if you notice here, you have a line. So I just went to Desmos, typed it in. What you're going to do is basically split it right here through the vertex and write an equation for the left side and equation for the right side. So I'm just going to make it like that so you can see slope and minor step. So they're clearly lines, right? So for this first one, it would exist to the left of the x value positive 2. And then this one, make it so that it's greater than 2. It really doesn't matter which one you make. Um, have the equal. We talked about that yesterday when they were at the same point. If you had two pieces that intersected at the same point, make one of them have equal to and one not. But for the one that's to the left of 2, it's a negative sloping line, and your y-intercept is 2. So notice your slope. You should be able to just, if, you're, if your grid here is, is every box represents 1, you should be able to just go down 1 over 1. So my slope is negative 1. So we have negative 1x plus 2 as the equation for the left side. And then for the right side, your slope is just the opposite of whatever you typed here. So that's going to be a positive 1, which makes sense. Up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, right? So that means we have an understood 1x, but if I were to continue with that slope down to my y-axis to get my y-intercept for my equation, it would be at negative 2. So just like you go up one over one to go backward, down one left one, down one left one, and it would hit the y-axis at negative two. And, yep, that's really all you're doing is learning to write that um, as two separate lines. And notice, um, do they show you? No, I happen to do less than or equal to, but it would accept it either way. As long as one of them had the equal to. So, do y'all see that? Like, one of them has to have the equal to. It doesn't really matter which one. And that's what you'll do for those three. All right. Um, message me if y'all have any questions. Good luck.